On the AP exam, you're going to have to be able to do what's called linearizing a function. That means taking a function that is not a straight line when you graph it and turning it into a straight line. So I've got a bunch of functions that you maybe have seen before if you've taken pre-cal or cal, and maybe you haven't. But these are a bunch of different functions. Identity function, which is just a line, so that's already linear linearized. So basically, ultimately we want all graphs that we're going to make tonight to look like that. And you're going to have to do this on the AP exam and in tomorrow's lab. So imagine if I could take this function here, the square function, this parabola, and turn it into a line. How would I do that? Square root function. How would I turn it into a line? Cube root function. How would I turn it into a line? By this end of this video, you're going to be able to take any function and graph it as a straight diagonal line. Let's consider an example. So imagine I want to take that square function where it's y equals x squared. Hopefully that's something you've seen before. So if I were to graph y equals x squared, I need to switch to a different color than blue, it's kind of hard to see. If I were to graph y equals x squared, I would take every a couple x values, like say x equals 1, and that would give me y equals 1, because 1 squared is 1. x equals 2, y equals 1, 2, 3, 4. x equals 3, y equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And if I kept doing this or did it on a graphing calculator, I'd get a graph like so. And this is a graph of y versus x. But what if instead of graphing y versus x, I graph something else? So consider for a moment this green graph that I'm going to make down here. What if instead of graphing x, I graphed x squared as my horizontal value? So on my graph, my x is going to be x squared. So now, if I do plug in 1 into x, x squared is 1, and y would be 1. If I plug in 2 for x, x squared is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And y is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'd do 3 and get 9, 4 and get 16, and so on. But at every point, x and y, once graphed, make a straight line. And so by plotting x squared on my x-axis, I have successfully linearized this graph. I have changed it into a line. Let's try that with one more function before we apply it to physics. All right, let's say I wanted to graph y equals the square root of x. Graph that. It's definitely not going to make a line. Let's see what it makes. So let's plug in 1 for x. 1x, I get 1y. Now, the square root of 2, solving that would take a little time. So let's skip that one and do 4 for x. 1, 2, 3, 4. Plugging 4 for x, I get 2 for y. And now maybe 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 for x. I get 3 for y. And it makes a curve. Oops. Curve. Like so. Now what if I want to make that a straight line? Right now I graphed x and y. Instead, I could graph the square root of x and y. So let's make another graph. And now on the x-axis, I'm going to graph the square root of x, and on the y-axis, I'll still just graph y. Okay, so 1 for x, square root of 1 is 1, so 1 on the x-axis, 1 for y. 4 for x, well, the square root of 4 is 2, so 2. 2 for y. 9 for x. Well, the square root of 9 is 3, so 3 on the x-axis for square root. 3 for y. And if I kept going, I just get a straight line. I have successfully linearized the graph by plotting x square root of x versus y, whereas on the red graph, I did x versus y. So I changed what it was I was graphing. Now let's see how we can apply this to physics. 
When we graph things in physics, we usually want our slope to mean something real. So we want to be able to get something out of the slope. For example, if I graphed distance versus time, then my slope, distance over time, rise over run, y over x, my slope, distance over time, would be my speed. So on a graph of distance versus time, my slope is my speed, and that's meaningful. That's something physical that we can use. Well, let's consider what exactly we do when we graph something and take its slope. We're essentially just putting every equation in the form y equals mx plus b, and if that graph has, no, has a zero y-intercept, that means y equals mx, and when we find the slope, we're really just dividing each side by x and saying that y over x equals our slope. So anytime we graph and find the slope, we're just using the slope-intercept form and solving for the slope. Slope equals y over x. There are some interesting uses to that. Let's say I take an equation that doesn't quite look like slope y equals mx plus b. Say I take the equation ke, whoops, ke equals one half m v squared, and then I said I'm going to give you a bunch of energy measurements. I found some way to measure energy, and a bunch of velocity measurements, and then I give you a plot of kinetic energy versus velocity. So kinetic energy on y and velocity on x, Ke versus velocity. So let's think about what this graph would look like. Every time there's a velocity, it gets squared and multiplied by 1 half. So since kinetic energy is a function of velocity squared, I know that this graph will look something like that curve we got from y equals x squared. So our kinetic energy will look something like that graph I just drew. Well, the slope of that graph wouldn't really mean anything. It can't get anything meaningful out of it. So if I asked you, say, to solve for the mass on this graph, you'd have to do some work. You'd have to plug in numbers off of the graph back into the equation and solve for m. But what if I could change that graph in such a way that its slope is the mass I was looking for? Think for a second, what would you plot to have your the mass be your slope? Well, what if I plotted kinetic energy on the y versus one half velocity squared on the x? Well then, if we think back to the y equals mx plus b form, y would be kinetic energy and then 1 half v squared would be x, and m mass would be m slope. So I would essentially have rearranged the equation ke, let me write that somewhere else, ke equals 1 half v squared times m. And now m is our slope, 1 half v squared is our x, and it's in the form y equals mx plus b. Here b just happens to be 0. So let's think about what that graph would look like. If I had kinetic energy on the y and 1 half v squared on the x, I'd just get a straight line. And the slope of my line, the slope of my, my line, the rise over the run, or rather the rise over the run, would be my mass. And so I could easily find the mass of the object from this set of data by graphing Ke versus 1 half mv squared. Another physics example. Let's say I gave you a set of data that contains positions versus time. So position versus time. And I said, out of that set of data, find for me the acceleration. Well, hopefully, thanks to kinematics, you would think x equals x not e plus one half at squared. 
And for the sake of simplicity and to getting to the point, let's say I also told you the subject had no initial velocity. Boom. So no initial velocity. Our graph is now reduced to x equals x naught plus one half at squared. And let's even say that there was an initial x value, that x naught was not zero. Well, if you tried to plot this data in order to get out of it the acceleration, so let's say you plotted t versus x, x is a function of t squared, and so you get a curve out of it. And so there's not a constant slope. Your slope can't tell you anything. But if instead you were to plot x versus t squared, or better yet, 1 half t squared, so on my graph I plot x versus 1 half t squared, then that line would be straight, and your slope, according to this equation, would give you the acceleration. Well, how did I know your slope would give you the acceleration? So let's think about the slope-intercept form of an equation of a line. Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And I've got the current equation, x equals x naught plus 1 half at squared. So I basically want to force this equation to look like this one. Well, x is in the y position, so that's fine. I'll leave that there. x naught is just a number, and so I bet that's going to be the b, so plus x naught. a is the thing we're solving for. We want it to be our slope, so that should be our m, a. So we would graph 1 half t squared. And in our graph, whatever our slope-intercept is, sorry, whatever our y-intercept is, that's x naught. So whatever I got there, I'd put in for x naught. And then our slope would be our acceleration. 1 half at squared would be the x from y equals mx plus b. And a would be the m from y equals mx plus b. Point of all this is you can force any equation to look like y equals mx plus b. And then you can get the slope to find whatever m is. So in this case... I forced x equals x naught plus 1 half at squared into looking like y equals mx plus b, where acceleration was my slope, and then I knew I had to graph 1 half t squared so that acceleration would be my slope. So basically, I graph whatever's next to the thing I'm looking for. So in tomorrow's lab, we're going to be working with this equation. Centripetal force equals mass velocity squared over radius. And in this lab, we're basically going to take a tube, run a string through it, hang a mass on one end so we can measure that mass and therefore get the force of gravity on that mass. And then we're going to swing that tube so that something out here that we don't know the mass of, something out here, is going to swing in a circle. The force that, swing, that causes it to swing in a circle will be Fg. So Fg will be our centripetal force. We'll be able to actually measure the centripetal force. You can figure out a way, hopefully, to measure the velocity of that object flying in a circle. You did it with the pig. And you could easily measure the radius. You just take a meter stick and find the radius. So you will have, at the end, a data table that has at least our force, velocity, and radius. And I'm going to ask you to make a graph of something that will help you find the mass of this object. Your graph must have a useful slope. So I see an obvious answer, but there are actually a whole bunch of answers of things you could graph to get a useful slope. But you're going to create a graph of something versus something else, question mark one versus question mark two, 
And then your slope is going to have to be something. So you've got to think back to y equals mx plus b. Figure out how to arrange this equation, or another equation if you can think of a good one, into a y equals mx plus b form, where your slope is something meaningful and the x is the thing you're graphing. Think about that. In the comments, you must leave a comment saying what you would graph. That's all.